Welcome to the 2023 Antigua Forum, hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin, a free market university here in Guatemala. Today, we are with Pano Canelos, uh, who is the founding president of the University of Austin, where he is dedicated to offering an affordable, intellectually rigorous higher education experience. He previously served as president of St. John's College, a liberal arts school in Annapolis, Maryland. Welcome, Pano. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Well, Pano, um, you are invested in a very serious project to build a new university. Not only that, you are charged with building something that really stands out from the rest of higher education today. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, more about the mission of the University of Austin and uh, when it plans to open and what you really hope to achieve as its founding president? Uh, we believe very strongly that a uh, university should be a place where politics are studied. It shouldn't be the operating system of the university. And as universities are sort of drawn further and further into the culture wars we have today and, and the kind of political tumult, and they've, they've lost for the most part the sense of their true mission, which is uh, the, the production of knowledge, the, tra the transmission of knowledge, and ultimately the preservation of knowledge. So we thought, well, let's build a university going back to first principles. Let's start with the fearless pursuit of truth as our operating principle and think about building a university from the ground up from there. So we did that. Uh, we launched about a year ago publicly. Um, we have had uh, quite a bit of um, support from you know, very, very highly regarded uh, public intellectuals, academics, on our founding board of trustees is Neil Ferguson, Barry Weiss, uh, Joe Lonsdale, the tech entrepreneur, uh, early people involved with the project. And so what we've done is we've gotten together and we've thought about how do we return uh, university and its culture to, to, the, to being a culture of open inquiry, freedom of conscience, civil discourse? And what adjustments can we make to the current model? The financial model of the university is a curricular model, cultural model that will uh, preserve universities as a place for the free and open exchange of ideas. So that's the premise. Our intention is to have our first group of undergraduate students in the fall of 2024. Uh, when we first started this project, everybody in higher education said, well, starting a new university is gonna take at least a decade. And we said, we'll have students in three years, and, and we will. That's great. So one issue in higher education today uh, is, is everything kind of related to freedom of speech, academic freedom, uh, the ability to have an environment where there's, there's not just like singular you know, thinking. What do you think of the environment um, of intellectual inquiry in higher education and how the University of Austin is positioning itself in that environment. If you're going to you know, improve the situation, you have to identify the root cause. And I would say the primary cause is the uh, bureaucratization of higher education. When administrators are uh, creating the culture of a university, not the faculty nor the students, the purpose of the university starts serving bureaucratic ends rather than the pursuit of knowledge or, or academic freedom. We want to create an academic environment where we can dispel those things so we can create a culture of communication, dialogue, and trust so that we have the uh, you know, maximum range of opinions at, on the table as we're thinking about the important things that confront all human beings. Speaking of some of those bureaucratic things in higher education, higher education has a lot of challenges. Uh, let's start with economic challenges. It's, it's expensive. Uh, college students, um, whether they uh, are graduating from college or whether they are dropping out of college are leaving or carrying with them a large financial burden of student loan debt. Uh, some question whether college itself is even worth uh, the cost today. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, there are a million and a half fewer students in the American higher education system today than there were before COVID. I mean, that data point should tell us something um, that uh, the value, the perceived value of higher education relative to the cost, relative to what you have to put into it, is starting to be questioned by quite a number of young people and they're thinking about alternative pathways towards their future. So if we're going to offer an education to students, and we're gonna focus on developing the life of the mind and the kind of experiences that will allow them to flourish in the future, we have to pare away those excessive costs and get back to what's, you know, what's essential. And I think by setting a moderate tuition, you set expectations around what your expenditures can be. So, um, so I think if we don't uh, solve the, the problem of the financial model of higher education and make high quality, rigorous, uh, intellectual journeys available to students at a 
at a cost that is sustainable for families and for institutions over time, the system will collapse. Higher education, uh, a lot of it has been sort of captured by the left. And there are just a number, you know, when we talk about intellectual diversity, there's just a number of conservative institutions of higher education in, in the United States. I'll name a few, Hillsdale College, Grove City College, maybe some smaller schools like Patrick Henry College or Christensen College that are more religious uh, in nature. Um, but how does the University of Austin compare or contrast itself to those sorts of institutions of higher education? I understand why, why we've seen a kind of uh, flowering of institutions that sit on the right side of the political spectrum kind of in response to this perception that the, that the left dominates higher education. Uh, that's not our ambition. Our ambition is to be non-sectarian, non-partisan, because we really think at the core of the university, it should, there should be a kind of openness to all perspectives. Um, the kind of university we're trying to create and model for the future is one of intellectual pluralism. Um, and so we wanna maximize the potential for intellectual pluralism. And it's a challenge because everybody is naturally sorting into camps and, you know, and teams and, and parties and that, and it's becoming harder and harder to, um, to bring together people across differences. But really, I think that's the core of our ethos. What have you learned about UFM uh, and its 50 year history that maybe impacts some of your thinking about building an institution for higher learning? Uh, first of all, I love UFM. I've come to know UFM um, rather well over the past year and a half. Uh, I've been down here three times now and, and have really turned to UFM as a kind of model for how you build a successful university that stays true to its mission over time. There's visual evidence, there's active evidence everywhere of what the university uh, stands for, what its purpose is. The institution itself uh, exemplifies those principles. It's built in a way that honors the principles that it believes in around markets and freedom and that. And so you have to have a full integration between what you believe and what you do. You have to create the culture that reflects your values. And I think UFM does that superbly. We're here at the, the Antigua Forum where project owners have uh, you know, brought their projects here and they've gone through a rigorous process of a lot of people in the brains trust kind of giving them ideas and feedback. What did you learn from this process this week that you might apply to building projects um, with what you're doing in higher education? Many things. Uh, one is that we learn best through interactive, intelligent dialogue. When feedback is offered from participants to project managers, there's openness and curiosity and follow-up in that. And I think it's that interactive quality. You know, each of us, I like to say we're all creatures of logos. We all have a little fragment of wisdom uh, and we have something to share with each other, but none of us has total knowledge of anything. And so the more that we can kind of piece together a mosaic of uh, understanding by interacting with people who are both uh, committed to the things that we believe in or maybe wanting to challenge those, I think the better off we'll be as we try to achieve great things. Great. Well, Pano, thank you so much for being here with us at the Antigua Forum. We hope to see you back here in the future. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, Francisco.